Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to play the game Kitchen Rush, the one to four player game from Artipia Games and Stronghold Games here in the US. Kitchen Rush comes with all of the components that you see here, including 108 custom wooden tokens representing different ingredients, 28 money tokens separated into ones and fives, 56 wooden cubes representing different spices, four player mats, one prestige mat with two wooden cubes to represent points and rounds, one game board, one cloth bag to hold spices during gameplay, 22 plates in different sizes, 16 different cardboard tokens to represent unavailable or locked spaces and malfunctioning items, 10 worker hourglasses, and 110 different cards, separated into 60 orders, 4 upgrades, 8 prestige bonuses, 14 objectives, and 24 events. To begin setup, place the game board in the middle of the table. Next, place all of the ingredients, spices, and money near the game board. Then place a certain number of spices into the spice bag depending on the player count. We're doing a two-player example. In a two-player game, players need to put one spice of each type into the bag. One red, yellow, black, green, and white. After this is done, the spice bag can be placed near the play area. Shuffle the four upgrade cards and place them in a face-down stack near the office area. Then reveal two of the upgrade cards face up. Then give each player a player mat and two hourglass markers. These will be their workers. Next, choose two hourglass markers of an unused color. Place one of these markers next to the board. This will be known as the player's helper. And place one of these markers face down near the upgrades area. This helper can be unlocked if the players pay for a certain upgrade. Then place the prestige mat on the side of the playing area. Make sure to put one of the purple cubes starting on the zero space of the score track and one on the first space of the round track. Shuffle the prestige bonus cards and place them in a face down stack on the first card slot of the prestige mat. The game comes with a number of different objective cards. Decide on the difficulty that you want to play. You can choose from easy, normal, hard, or very hard. After choosing the corresponding objective, make sure that everyone knows what's required to win, and then place this card near the playing area. Finally, shuffle the order cards and place them in a face-down stack near the order area of the board. Players will then need to add items to the game board depending on the player count. We're setting up for a two-player example. In a two-player game, place unavailable action markers on any space showing three or four players, and place the long unavailable token on one of the storage spaces. Place a locked token on one of the oven spaces, and a long locked token on the other storage area. Place two each of the sized one, two, and three dishes, and one sized four plate in the clean plates area on the board. Then place one of each plate size in the dirty plates area. Place one coin in the office area. This is the player's starting money. Next, draw two orders from the order deck and place them on the order spaces. Finally, players will need to place ingredients into the two storage areas the active storage area, and the locked storage area. In a two-player game, the active storage area needs five meat and five vegetables, and then three each of the salad, pasta, cheese, and bread tokens. In the locked storage area, the players need four meat, four vegetables, and then two of each of the salad, pasta, cheese, and bread markers. After this, setup is complete and you're ready to play. The last step is to have someone set a timer for four minutes. Kitchen Rush is a cooperative game, which means that all players are trying to work together to win or lose as a team. Kitchen Rush is played in a series of four rounds, and each round, there are three separate phases. The preparation phase, the action phase, and the cleanup phase. In the preparation phase, players will complete a few steps in this order. First, move the round marker to indicate the new round. In round one, players can skip this step. Then, players can freely discuss their plans for the upcoming action phase. Players can use this time to discuss their strategy 
and what they think the best steps are for completing an efficient round. The next phase is the action phase. It's played in real time. At the start of this phase, a player will start a four minute timer. The players only have four minutes to complete their actions and then the round is over. During the action phase, players will place their hourglasses, which represent their workers, onto spaces to take actions. When you place your worker on a location, flip the hourglass so that the time runs out. It's important to note that a player can take the action as soon as their worker is placed at this location, but the players will not be able to move this worker until the time has run out. So for instance, with the green player's worker that they've placed at the sink, since the time has run out, they can then pick up this worker and either place it at the same location again or move it to a different location to take another action. A player can either use the hourglasses of their color or they can use the helper. It's important to note that the helper can be used by all players. So if a player decides to move and use the helper, they can do so freely. It's also important to note that if there are no free spaces at the location where you wish to take an action, you have to wait until another player moves their worker. For instance, the blue player couldn't take an action at the storage location until either the green player or whoever is using the helper decides to move. Some locations allow players to take actions as long as they are there. For instance, the storage location will allow players to take ingredients for as long as their worker is at this location. It's important to note, however, that if a player places a worker on a new location, the ability to use their previously placed action stops immediately. So for instance, if the green player were taking the storage action and they then placed a new worker at the sink, the ability for them to take the storage action would immediately stop. They would have to either place another worker at this location or flip over the worker that was already there to reactivate the storage action. It's important to note that as soon as the timer runs out, players are no longer able to move their hourglasses. The round is essentially over. You can, however, finish an action that you started. So for instance, if a player placed their worker at the storage location right before the round ends, they are able to place ingredients onto their order cards until they no longer wish to do so. Then the round end and the cleanup phase will take place. Now that we've looked at the basic structure of a round and how players take their turns, let's look at what each individual spot will allow players to do. If a player visits the Mater D location, they have one of two options. They can either turn over two new order cards and place them in open spaces in the order row. If they do this, they're allowed to gain one coin for each overturned order, up to two, obviously. If a player chooses to do this, they would place the newly gained money in the office. This is where players store their money. The other option that a player has is to discard two cards that are in the order row and replace them with two newly drawn cards. So for instance, the player could discard these two and draw two new order cards to replace them. It's important to note that if players choose to take the discard and replace action, they don't gain coins as if they're turning over two new orders. The next action that a player can take is having a waiter fill one of the orders. When a player places their worker on the waiter space, they are able to select one of the order cards in the face-up order row to take as an order. For instance, a player could select this order if they wanted to. When a player takes an order card, there are a few things to pay attention to on the card. The first thing a player needs to do is look at the plate size. This order requires this size plate. The plate will be immediately taken from the clean plates area when the order is selected. For instance, this player could take a three size plate from the clean plates area when this order is selected. Any plate that is taken when an order is selected is placed in the zero row of the player's player mat. This means that the plate has not been cooked yet. The next thing a player looks at whenever they take an order are the required ingredients for this order. For instance, this order requires one vegetable and two pasta. In addition, this order requires one green spice. You then look at how long this dish must be cooked. This dish must be cooked to a level one. Once ingredients are placed on plates, there are actions that players can take that will allow them to cook their food to different levels. Finally, at the bottom of the card, a player will see what completing this order correctly will reward them with, money and sometimes prestige points. It's important to note that if there are no plates that are the correct size based on the order's requirements, 
a player is allowed to use a plate that is one level above. For instance, if there were no level 3 plates in the clean plates area, this player could select this level 4 plate instead. It's also important to note that if there are no clean plates that match the size directly or the size above, a player can still take an order card, and as soon as the correct size plate is cleaned, they can then take that plate and place it on the zero row of their player mat. There is a separate action that players can take at the waiter spot that will allow them to promptly deliver an order. But before we look at this action, let's look at the other actions that will allow you to fill an order's plate and cook the order correctly. The next action a player can take is to come to the storage. Going to the storage will allow the player to freely select any of the ingredients that are in the storage to place on plates in their zero row. As long as the green player has their worker in the storage space and they don't place their other worker or the helper in a new location, they can freely take ingredients from the storage area and place them on the plates in their zero row. So let's say that this player had these three orders in their zero row, for instance. This player could freely select the ingredients from the storage area and place them on the plates in their zero row. It's important to note that as soon as players decide to cook food and push it to the next level, they will no longer be able to add ingredients to their plates. So it's important that before players move their plates off of the first row, they make sure all of the ingredients are placed on the plate. It's important to note that spices can be placed on plates after they are moved into the different levels. Only ingredients such as bread or cheese, vegetables and pasta cannot be added once players have cooked their plates. This player almost has all of the food-based ingredients that they need, but they're still missing one pasta on one of their plates. If players need more ingredients or more spices, they can take the shopping action. To take a shopping action, a player simply places one of their workers in the shopping action area. It's important to note that there's no limit to how many players can take the shopping action at the same time. To take the shopping action, a player would spend one of the coins from their office area, and then they would be allowed to take five ingredients of one type, three spices in any combination of black, green, or white, or two spices in any combination of red or yellow. So let's say, for instance, that the blue player discarded a coin and decided to buy five pasta. The blue player could then distribute these five pasta among any of the active storage areas. Currently, the players only have this storage area available, so the player would place the five pasta in this location. It's also important to note that a player of a different color can shop to put ingredients into storage while a player is taking the storage action. So for instance, if the green player had not placed a new worker at a new location, they could then take one of the resources that was just purchased and place it on their plates. So in this instance, the blue player was able to help the green player out, seeing that they needed one more pasta to complete their last order. The green player knows that they might need some more spices to complete one of their dishes. So they decide to take a shopping action as well, discarding one more coin to gain a combination of black, green, and white spices in any order that they wish. The green player selects one spice of each color. These can be placed immediately in the spice bag. The next action a player can take is to go to the ovens to cook their dishes. The green player needs to cook three separate orders, so they decide to go to one of the oven spaces. When a player decides to go to the oven space, they are allowed to cook one order on their player mat, one level. So for instance, this player decides to cook this order to level one. The last step the green player needs to take to complete their orders is to add spices to their food. The green player decides to come to the spices location. This allows players to freely select spices from the spice bag and place them on their dishes. It's important to note that you can add spices to dishes even after they've been cooked. This is different from ingredients. This player puts the spices that were needed onto the correct orders. Now these orders are ready to deliver at the end of the round or by making a prompt delivery action. The next action a player can take would be to serve their order promptly. To serve an order promptly, a player would go to the waiter space. After taking the serve promptly action, a player may turn one of the orders in their area sideways to show that it has been delivered promptly. This will allow the players to gain one coin in their office area as a tip. It's important to note that once an order has been served promptly during the round, 
Players can no longer cook the item, add spices, or ingredients, so it's important to make sure that the order is correct before it is promptly served. The next action space to look at is the sink area. When a player goes to the sink, they are able to select three of the dirty dishes in any combination and put them in the clean plates area. The blue player decides to take a level two, three, and four plate to clean. The final action space is the office. If a player visits the office, they have multiple options of things to do on their turn. At the end of the round, players are required to pay any workers that they've used during the round. If players are unable to pay a worker, the worker will be set aside and must be rehired to be used in future or current rounds. So let's say, for instance, the players were unable to pay for the green worker during a prior round. The green player could visit the office and as an action, pay two coins from the supply to rehire a worker that wasn't paid in previous rounds. After paying these coins, the player would place the rehired worker in the office and the players must allow the time to fully run through this worker before it can be used again during the current round. The next option players have on their turn is purchasing upgrades for their kitchen. There are two upgrades face up at the start of the game and players may visit the office to pay the costs listed to unlock certain upgrades. For instance, the green player could pay two coins from the office to hire an additional helper. The players would pay the coins to the supply, immediately take the helper that they could use right away, and place them next to the board. The helper upgrade card would then immediately be removed from the game, and a new upgrade card would be turned face up to replace the previously purchased card. This would allow players a new option for cards to upgrade. Upgrading the kitchen in this way allows players to take more actions or become more efficient. For instance, if a player was able to pay the cost to unlock the additional storage area, they would then have access to all of the ingredients that are stored in this locked location. Or for instance, if a player were able to pay three coins and unlock the locked action space for the oven, they would then have another oven to cook at. The last action a player could take if they visit the office is to remove malfunction tokens. Malfunction tokens are only used if players have decided to play with event cards, which we will discuss at the end of our rules video. It's important to note, however, that if you want to remove a malfunction token, you must visit the office and pay the cost that's listed on the malfunction token. For instance, these players would need to pay one coin from their office, which would then allow them to remove the malfunction token. Once the timer has stopped, the action phase is over, and players must then go through the cleanup phase. The first step of the cleanup phase is checking orders. Players must check each order that they have in their player area to make sure that they were correctly completed. Let's say, for instance, that a player is checking this order. The first thing to check for is to make sure that the correct plate size was used for the order. In this instance, a player needs a two, or they could also have used a three. The player has the correct plate size. Then players check to make sure that all of the correct ingredients were used, no less and no more. In this instance, the player has two pasta and two vegetables, so this order is correct in that regard as well. Then players check to make sure that the correct spices were played. This player needs yellow, green, and white. They have those correctly placed. Next, a player must determine if the order was cooked correctly. This dish needs to be cooked to level one, and it's currently cooked to level one. So that's correct as well. In this case, this player has correctly completed this order and would then gain three coins to the supply as a reward. The player would place the order to the side to be used in in-game scoring, and they would then place all ingredients and spices back to the common supply, not to the storage area, and clear the plate. The plate that was used for the order would then be placed in the dirty dishes area. Players repeat this step for each order in their face-up area. It's important to note that if players have not fully completed any orders, the players would need to move back their point marker one space for each order that was not completed. In this instance, this player doesn't have the spices that they need to correctly complete this order, and it hasn't been cooked to the correct level. After losing the prestige point, the player would leave the plate where it was. It can be completed in the next round. If a mistake was made completing the order, 
for instance, cooking the dish too much or adding ingredients that weren't required, the dish must be completely cleared of all of its ingredients. The plate needs to be put back in the dirty dishes, but the order stays. The order has to be completed again during the next round. It's important to note that once ingredients are placed on a dish, they cannot be removed. So if more ingredients than are required are placed on a dish, it's always counted as a mistake. It's also important to note that some orders have two dishes that must be prepared. In the instance of an order having two dishes, players must check each dish on the order to make sure that they were correctly prepared in the same way that they would check an order with one dish on it. If there's a mistake made on one of the dishes in a two dish order, only the dish containing the mistake has to be completely cleared and removed. If, however, the dish was correctly served with both plates being prepared correctly, the players would then gain their awards on the bottom of the order card with multiple dishes. In this case, two prestige points and five coins. And finally, it's important to note that if a dish was promptly served to a customer, but the dish was not completely correct, the players will have to lose two prestige points instead of one because the customer was served the wrong dish. The next step to talk about in the cleanup phase is paying wages. Players must pay the workers that they used during the round. So in this instance, these players only used three workers during the round. They would then have to pay three coins for each worker that was used. So in this case, these players would have to discard nine coins from their supply. Then the paid workers would be returned to their owners. If players don't have enough money to pay for all of the workers that were used during the round, players will have to pay the workers starting with helpers first and then decide which other workers they want to pay to use in the next round. So for instance, in this situation, the players would have enough to pay for this helper, and then they don't quite have enough to pay for these last two workers. They can only pay for one. So in this instance, the players decide to pay for the blue player's worker, placing the green to the side. They then pay their six coins to the supply, and during the following round, the green player's worker will have to be rehired at the office if they wish to use it again. The blue player's worker would be returned to them to be used during the next round. It's also important to note that for each worker the players can't pay, they have to lose a prestige point. It's also important to note that paying for workers is not optional. If in a future round during a cleanup phase, players have paid all of their workers and have enough to pay any workers that weren't previously paid, they have to do so. So for instance, if during a previous round, the players had not paid for a green worker and they had six coins left over after paying for all of their workers used in the current round, they would then have to pay these three coins to the bank and rehire the green worker. Finally, players will see if they have gained a prestige bonus. If during the cleanup phase, you are able to increase your prestige level to a space showing the current player count, you are able to turn over the top card from the prestige deck and place it in the row. This will allow you to gain a bonus and possibly a requirement for the next round. This effect will be active in the following round. It's also important to note that during the cleanup phase, if players lose prestige points and it causes them to move off of the bonus space, they have to lose the prestige card, placing it back on top of the deck. If at any time your prestige would go below negative four, you immediately lose the game. The game ends after four rounds have been completed. After the rounds have been completed, the players check the objectives on their objective cards to see if they have completed them. For instance, on this easy objective in a two-player game, players need to have completed 14 orders, have six coins in their supply, and four points on their prestige track. If you have completed these goals, you win. If you don't, you lose. It's also important to note that in addition to meeting all of the requirements listed on the objective, you have to have no unpaid hourglasses as well. You must always have at least one coin, and you must always have at least one prestige. It's also important to note that if players want to for an additional challenge after they've played the game and know it fairly well, they can add event cards. To incorporate event cards, players simply shuffle the event deck and turn over one event card to take effect at the start of each round. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. 
If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can listen to the Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or pretty much any other podcast app. You can read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com and make sure and connect with us at our guild at boardgamegeek.com. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.